Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to add Juniper images to your EVNG lab. All right, so to get started, if you don't already have EVNG installed, go ahead and check out the previous video I created in the top right hand corner. All right, so first thing to get started is I'll navigate over to the free downloads page for the VQFX image. So if I just open a new tab and go to Google and type free Juniper, free VQFX download Juniper. All right, so I'm gonna see the first link that comes up. It's gonna be for juniper.net. So I'll go ahead and click this. And if I scroll down, you'll see it says start your free trial today. Step one, if you don't already have a Juniper registered account, you can click here to create an account and you don't have to be a partner or anything. You can just sign up and register for an evaluation user access, which will grant you access to download this free software image. Um, so once that's done, you can come here and select the VQFX software. So once I get redirected, you'll see I get brought to this downloads page where I have the PFE image as well as the RE image that we'll be downloading to make up this one logical device. And you can choose whichever desired version you'd like to go with. If you want to experiment, play around with some other versions, you can certainly do that. But for this image, I'll just be downloading the 20.2 version, which is the latest release. And I'll go ahead and click this download button. So that's going to prompt me to log in with that email that I registered. So I'll go ahead and do that now. <coughs> All right, so once I get logged in, um, I'm just going to go ahead and agree to this terms of agreement form. Scroll down to the bottom and select proceed. I'll click here to download it to my local system. And I'll do the exact same for the second image. You see here, this was the PFE image. Right here, I have my RE image. So I'll go ahead and click download and click here. All right, now I can see here I have both of those images downloaded. So what I'll do next is I'll go back to Google and I'll type in download ONSCP. This will make transferring those files over to the EVNG server really easy. So I'll just click on this download link. And I already have this installed, but if you don't already, just go ahead and click this green download button for WinSCP, and that'll start the installation process for you. All right, so I'll exit out of this, and I want to go to Google and search for the EVNG naming convention. If I look here and I scroll down, I'll see there's this helpful table right here. In the middle, it's gonna show me all of the different vendors that EVNG supports. On the left-hand side, it's telling me the name of the folder that I'll need to create in EVNG um, in order for it to register in the software. And on the right-hand side is the name of what I'll be naming the actual image. So to give you an example, if I go ahead and scroll down to Juniper, I'll just scroll down one more. Okay, here I can see we see the Juniper VQFX PFE image as well as the RE image. And so I need to create a folder in EVNG that starts with this. Whatever comes after this is completely fine. And I'll need to rename the software image to HDA. So I'll go ahead and pull up WinSCP and show you exactly what that looks like. Once I pull up WinSCP, I'll click on New Site. I'll leave the file protocol as SFTP. And I'll log in to the IP address of my EVNG server, which is 192.168.0.3. I'll get log in with the default username of root and the password that I configured. If yours is still the default, it should be EVE. All right, so I've gotten logged in. The directory in which we're gonna create this, this image is going to be, if you back all the way to the top of where you just see this root symbol, we're going to click on the OPT folder, the unit lab, add-ons, QMU. Here, I'm going to go ahead and create those folders. So I'll just do new directory. And I'll go ahead and give it that name that we see listed right here, that we saw listed previously. So I'll copy that. I'll go back to WinSCP. And I'll paste in that name. And I'm going to just tack on the version just for my own uh, my own sanity to R1. 
Now do the exact same for the second image. But I want to rename this to RE, as we can see here. All right, so I'll tack on 20.2 R1 and hit enter. So now I want to go ahead and copy these files over to even G. So I'll go ahead and copy this image for the PFE into the PFE folder. I'll go ahead and paste that. All right, now that that's finished importing, I'll go ahead and rename this file to HDA as we saw earlier. So I'll click on it, type rename, and simply type in HDA. I'll click the up arrow and I'll do the exact same for the RE image. I'll right click, copy this over to the RE folder. All right, and now that that's finished importing, I'll go ahead and rename this to HDA as well. Okay, lastly, what I wanna do is go pull up EvenG in the VMware Workstation player. I'll just log in with my default credentials, root, and if you're using the default, it'll be Eve. And I want to run this one command to make sure everything runs correctly. So I'll search for even G, fix permissions. It's this command right here. So I'll go ahead and copy that to a local notepad and just pull it off to the side. I'll pull up that VMware workstation again. And I'll go ahead and type in that command. Opt Unit lab wrappers UNL wrapper dash A fix permissions. And I'll hit enter. It takes just a moment and it's done. So now if I head back over to even G and I go over here to add a node and I do a search for Juniper, I can see here that my VQFX images now show up in blue. If they don't show up in blue, double check to see if you named the files correctly uh, as mentioned earlier. So I'll go ahead and select the PFE image and click save. That'll drag it on the platform. And I'll do the exact same for the RE image. Okay, I'll bring that right here. And in order to connect these two devices, because these two devices function as one logical device, I need to connect their internal interfaces. So I'll click, hover over this device, and I'll see this orange uh, connection cable. So I'll drag this over to the other device, and I'll just let go. The interface that I want to connect between these two devices is this EM1 internal interface, INT. And I'll just select that for both, and click Save. Now that that's in place, I'll go ahead and start both of these virtual machines and I will see you when it finishes loading. Okay, so one thing that might occur when you click on these images for the first time is, you know, it doesn't load like you would expect, or, yeah, it doesn't load like you would expect. Quick fix is just to log out, and it's fine if you still have them powered on, but switch this over to HTML5 console. I'll go ahead and log in with the username of admin and the password of Eve. And now if I come back and I select this, I can see it gives me the output of the device. So I'll let this continue to run and I'll see you when it's finished. All right, so once the device comes up, just simply log in with the default username of root and the default password is gonna be Juniper with a capital J. So I'll type in that now and I'll hit enter. And sweet, I can move into the CLI and we are up and running. All right, well, that is the end of this video. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and tick that bell notification icon so you can stay tuned for future videos. As always, thanks for viewing and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.